Johnny Bianco got here. He's in the building. You see him on The Sopranos, a bunch of other TV movie appearances. Let's give him a late night welcome, John Bianco. <laughs> What's going on, pal? Oh, baby. What's doing? Oh, man. My, Everything. My private jet got you here all right? Private jet got me all right. I'm billing I you mean, for the I fuel. Literally flew in. <laughs> Who's this guy? Who's this guy? That's Woody. Hey, Woody, what's up, hey, Woody, what's up man? What's up? Yeah. I like that. I like that. So now, John, you're originally from Brooklyn. Yes, I am. You've been in the acting business for 20 years. 20 plus years. That's ups right. and downs. A lot of ups and downs, yep, a lot of downs. Yep. Now listen, before you got your, your break on The Sopranos, why don't you give us a little history how you got there? Um, well, I mean, you know, I mean, short, long short of it is, uh, you know, I was actually a stockbroker uh, for many years, and then once the market collapsed, I just figured, you know, let me go after my dreams at that point. So, um, you know, I always wanted to be a filmmaker and an actor, so I just basically at that point hit the grindstone and, uh, Got hooked up with a couple of agents that I wasn't really happy with, and then I finally hooked up with uh, Rosella Olson, who is my manager now. Mm -hmm. And um, I got the first good break on uh, Special Victims Unit, okay. uh, Law and Order. Great show. I worked with Chris, Christopher Maloney nice. and Mariska. Um, and that was the first launching off part for me. And, um, and then, you know, I mean, it's like independent films, you know, the Brooklyn Boys, I put that together. Yeah, I saw that. You know, a bunch of things, and uh, and then finally, um, I read for The Sopranos uh, probably for three seasons, for a good three seasons. Mm -hmm. And um, after a while, you know, just going up there, I thought they didn't like me, you know. Um, but um, uh, Georgiana Walken, who was doing the casting, you know, she's like, no, no, they like you. It's just a matter of what this mm -hmm. and that. So when I finally get the part. You know, I said to Terrence Winter, who's one of the writers and ex executive producers, I said, Terry, I got to tell you, I, was, I really didn't want to come back up here anymore. Um, I thought you guys didn't like me. He's mm -hmm. like, no, it was just, we knew what we wanted you for. We knew we wanted to work with you. And then as soon as I heard that, it's just like, because every actor wants to hear that. You know, yeah. oh, we knew we wanted to work with you. And it was just, you know, it was a really a high point in my, in my career. Yeah, that, that, was, that was good. You know what was weird? Because I don't know if you remember, I did a lot of background work, but I got... I had an agent at the time. I was just dabbling with it. But they sent me the guy who played Butch. Who was the guy who played Butch that was part of Phil's crew with you? Yeah, Butch. That's uh, Greg. Okay. Greg, yes. That's the part that they gave me to read for. Oh, I really? got lucky with it. And yeah. I went back a couple of times, but there was hundreds of people there. Right. And I'm not an actor. I'm a character right, actor. Right. That's what they wanted. Right, right. But then he got the part. They, yeah. were looking, they were looking for a guy in their 40s, late yeah. 30s, right. and they wound up giving it to him. Well, but he did a, he did a great job. Yeah, but uh, he was actually he's a personal friend of David Chase's. Uh huh. And um, he was out of the business for a long time. He actually used to write for the Rockford Files. I'm oh going, yeah, really? Back in the day? I'm going way back. Wow. Yeah. If you look at his IMDb, he was a writer and a producer. That's and a big show back then. Yes. Seventies. Yeah. Yeah. So and and obviously he's a lot older than us. Um, and he was a good friend of David. So. Uh, they got him right in there. There you go, go by then. That's, but that's I met you. I met you in the. But we, you didn't even know. I was, you know, I was in. The, I wasn't even yeah, doing the show at the time. Right, right. You were in the food cart a couple of times, but they did your hair different. Yeah, well, they right. right? David had this idea of this, uh, you know, California blonde surfer mobster guy. Yeah. <laughs> now, that was in the description, and I, you know, I never thought that they would actually do that. So, you know, first day I get there, or no, actually two weeks before, they're like, okay, so we're going to send you to. Um, you know, our colorist, and I'm mm -hmm. like, what are you talking about? And uh, they were like, yeah, you know, we got to make your hair blonde. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so I had to walk around like that for like a good year and a half where they, you know, the only good thing out of that was is that, you know, it was like an extra day's pay. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they had to get me in there and do, do my hair. and But I didn't like it, you know. I didn't, I didn't really like That's it. a lot of things with the actors and what the, the costumes they put themselves in and all that. It's like yep. not what you choose. Right, exactly. Now, there's a story about people that know about, about your character. Right. Why don't you talk about that? They'll like this. Okay. Um, this is something that not too many people know about. Uh, so I, get, I, get, I booked a job for Jerry Torciano. And um, the second episode in, when we're going to do the table read, um, I'm looking at stuff, and, and I'm like, I think it says Jerry gets shot here. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And, 
And this is before we're in the table reading. The guy next to me, you know, the young kid, he says, uh, yeah, he goes, yeah, you know, I got, got a little break here. I get to kill Jerry Torciano. <laughs> and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. After the second episode and I had three years to get on the show. Yeah. So I was, needless to say, I was completely bummed out. Yeah, of course. Um, but, you know, I said, you know what, I had, I had to take it. I says, all right, whatever, we're going to do it. I, you know, I get killed, what am I going to do? You, know? you were with uh, little Steven. Yeah, Silvio, right? right? Yeah. It yeah. was the last scene. No, season. no, but what happened was this this is what happened. This is only the second episode in. Okay, tell me. Yes. So I get down there, we shoot this whole big day scene. I'm in a car, and it's a, I, we get riddled up with bullets, me and this other guy. And um, it was like Sonny at the crosswalk from The Godfather. So I, you know, thanked everybody, blah, blah, blah. I'm on my way. A month later, I get a call from my manager. She's like, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? She's like, they're, they're scratching that whole day, and they want to keep you on as a recurring character. Uh-huh, great. So that was really, to me, you know, again, for an actor, you know, they liked me that much that they complete. I mean, he probably spent three, four $400,000 on the day shooting. Wow. Yeah. And then to bring me back, and then I lasted yeah. another, uh, you know, season and a half. It's a whole head game, that industry. Oh, it's just, you know, I mean, when people say, oh, you know, I want to be an actor, I want to be an actor. I mean, unless you like live breathe eat and I shit mean, exactly right it's 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 just it's close to next to impossible to making it you know i don't mean to sound like <laughs> no he's totally right same thing with the music business like the I, music, yeah. I just did the thing with the sopranos because you know look at a lot of the the, the mob movies half the guys that made it were just regular knock around guys that yeah. are on the corner on the street one of our friends and then they get a break that's how yeah. I looked at it, and I just went, is this fun? And then I thought, you know what, this is tough shit. Oh, I did the music business all my life. What am I going to do? So I going on acting auditions and being, <laughs> excuse me, being in the street one yeah, day? Yeah. If I would have known make that about show business, that I'd had a hand in my ass for 30 years, <laughs> I'd quit yesterday. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so it, it, that's what the whole, right? Yeah, no, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's you know, I look at it like this when people say, well, you know, how long are you going to give it and this and that? For Everyone me, says that. But for me, it's not a matter of well, I'm going to give it five years. I'm going to give it ten years. It's this is who I, this when is my life. When you love life. what you do, it's it's right. not a job. It's my life. Right. I'm an actor, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if I have to drive a cab on the side or whatever it is I have to do. I'm never going to stop being an actor and a filmmaker. And that's yeah. what kind of forced me into, you know, going behind the camera as well, learning how to direct and write and, and yes. light and do all that other stuff and edit and. You know, you can't just be a, uh, you can't just wear one hat. No, you got to do everything. Now, before we get into all the stuff you're currently doing, one question I like to ask, I always ask someone, that an actor that works on The Sopranos, and you worked with James Gandolfini, tell us one of your fondest memories of a day on the set with James, or dinner, or whatever. Yeah, he, um, I mean, what a, a great guy. Um, I mean, he was, he always gave you everything. Like, even when a lot of people, a lot of people won't do like off-camera scene work, meaning, like if the cameras if if the cameras on him for the first shot and I'm talking to him, it's just locked on him. I'm off camera, so I'm doing the scene. Now we turn around and the camera's on me, and there's no camera on him, but we're still playing the same scene out. That's considered off-camera scene work. He would sit there for it didn't matter how long it took. And I've worked with people that I really can't mention that yeah. they don't do off camera stuff. No, yeah. And it's just ridiculous, you know? Especially if it's your show, it's going to make the other actors better. And you always want to do something like that. And he was just, you know, we, we did uh, a scene where we, were we cracked up laughing. Um, actually, it's the scene uh, where I'm with uh, Frank Vincent, who was I, his right hand man. I love Frank And it was uh, Silvio, uh, you know, S Stevie Van Sant. Yep. And we, w we had to get to this Costco at like four in the morning. And uh, we kept walking down the alley. And uh, one of the guys kept screwing up. And he just was like so patient with the whole thing, the whole process that um, anybody else would have been like, you know, really? I mean, come on, let's, yeah. let's get this. Some of these guys together. get like, like, but fancy. I mean, I, I just, that, that moment sticks out to me. And, uh, and also the first day I, I was on set, uh, he welcomed me and he said, you know, nice to meet you. I'm glad you're on board, and just a, a consummate professional. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and it's it's a real shame that he's yeah, big loss. James Gandolfini, yeah. right, everybody? Yeah. Yeah. He'll be remembered yeah. forever. Just a great guy, great guy.
Now, currently, you just uh, up and coming feature, Lily of the Feast. Yes. When is that going to be released? Uh, well, that I just literally came from. Oh, that's what that working. is today. Yeah. You got so many new things coming up. I can't keep on talking yes. about it. Yes. So um, this is a very good friend of mine. Uh, he's an attorney in Long Island. Mike Rosigliano wrote this. We did a short version of the film yeah, four left, years yeah. ago. It was called Lily of the Feast. It's about Williamsburg in the 70s. And um, it touches on some mob stuff and, and a banker that has got like this uh, photographic memory for numbers and a mob guy wants to use him and he doesn't want to be it, but his father was used to be a mob guy. Um, a timepiece, it's just a great story. Mm -hmm. I love the, the fact that it's from 1973. Yeah, and um, it's just, and Federico Castelluccio, who also was on The Sopranos, he's a, a good friend of mine as well, he's directing the film. Oh, nice. And um, actually, uh, Jane Fonda's son is is one of the lead guys in, oh, really? in, in the film as well. And I'm also working with Paul Servino in, in the film. Nice. And uh, David Preval, which is, uh, he's an awesome guy. Richie played, Aprio. Richie Aprio. He was the best. But I mean, and I, I'm, I'm married to his daughter in the film, and he's my boss. Oh, cool. Uh, so I get to do a lot of scenes with him, and we were kidding around, and you know, it just the one funny thing what what uh, Gandolfini said to him, and, and it was, you know, stop staring at me with those Manson eyes. Yeah, because he's just got that look, like yeah. he's just, you know. Well, him in his prime when he was on his Sopranos, best. he must have been in his mid fifties, but he had that like killer he's look. Amazing. Like, he's amazing. He could look at you in the yeah. face and rip you, rip your heart out. Redemption. I mean, he's done. You know, if you look at him up on the IMDb, it's just uh, he's got so many credits. Great guy. Now, Friends and Romans. A lot of our friends are in it. Talk about friends that. Friends and Romans. Yes, another movie. We shot that um, in Dece uh, December of uh, this past year and into January. Um, Michael uh, Michael Rosigliano, uh, Annabelle Ciora, mm -hmm. uh, another good friend of mine as well, um, uh, Anthony DeSantis. Mm -hmm. Uh, a great cast, Louis Lewis, Louis Lu Fenario, Lu Lu yeah, Fenario. bringing yep. him up again. Yep, he's in it as well. Uh, what about Walt Martin in there, right, Paulie? No. no, oh yes, he, he is. is yes, right? yeah. yeah. I, you know what? I didn't get to work with him. He was doing uh, different. St he was on different days, but it's a, that that's um, it's basically a play on the stereotype Italian roles that guys get, like you know, Rispoli. Yeah. So um, he wants to put on this play. Uh, that's kind of like a Shakespearean play, and uh, it just really—it's—it's uh, it's real funny. It's—it's it's like a dark comedy. Well, listen, that's almost your time. Uh, why don't you talk a, bit, a little bit about? As you said you did a little bit of writing, direct, and you did a short, long, long shot, Louis. Yeah, it's a feature with a friend of yours. Yes, Steve Stan. Yeah, yeah, Steve. What's up, Steve? Yeah. So, um, long shot, Louis is a, is a dark story. It's—it's it's kind of a cross between um, the wrestler and uh, and Boogie Nights. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm. It's about this uh, washed-up ex-Chippendale dancer, and uh, I play his father. It's a flashback scene from like 1983, where I'm this drunk, abusive guy, and uh -huh. it, that was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, he wanted he wanted me to write something for him in the dark in the dark vein. So uh, we went with that, and it's it's uh, he's looking to get it picked up right now, and that was a lot of fun shooting and writing that and directing that as well. Well, for people who don't know, John's a former Chippendale uh, dancer over here, right? <laughs> You gotta look at his pictures. We yeah. actually, we actually opened for you guys one time <clears throat> up oh, in really? Manhattan. Yeah, we, yeah I, I got naked. <laughs> <laughs> I got naked, ladies. Oh. Well, John, where can people find you on the internet? Check out your films. Um, well, y you know, Facebook, definitely Facebook, and, I, and I'm new to Instagram, okay. so just definitely follow me on Instagram and uh, friend me on Facebook and IMDb. You know, do searches on IMDb. Um, We'll come back and visit us anytime. Absolutely. All right, I'm John Bianco, here. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, Pete, I'd like to say a special thank you and Woody for well, coming down to the you, show. Thank you, John. It was a pleasure. Anytime, Johnny P. You did a great, great job. Thank you so We're much. We're going to do this again, right? Yes, yes. I had a great time. All right, Pete Michaels, everybody. Pete. Pete.